move and so the word come again and say I can do exceeding Woo, but I move again go over to your name and so each time I sort of move back I kept looking at the word instead of my situation and then when the word said move I move go into your name because it's in him that I move it's in him that I leave in the beginning God said let there be light and he saw that it was good Lift up your heads, I feel the Holy Ghost. O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Woo! I see something happening in this place. Glory to your name. There's a shift in the atmosphere. I told y'all we come to shift economics. We're not gonna stop till we see change. We're like Jacob, we gonna wrestle till our name is changed. I'm a wrestle till it's spill over on my son. I'm a wrestle till it's spill over on my daughter. I'm a wrestle till it's spill over on my generations. That ain't even born yet. Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. I'm gonna praise God till my unborn son get it. My unborn daughter, come on somebody. We serve a generational God. That's why they always say Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come on, somebody. God ain't just looking at you. God is looking at your whole timeline and circle. That's why you may feel like, God, why is it taking so long for you to work in my situation? He's saying, baby, I ain't just looking at you. Y'all need to go back and read Joel, the first chapter. Because, see, you can't understand Joel, the second and third chapter, until you read Joel, the first chapter. Because he said that a punishment came on the people. And it affected their children's and children's children. He said, the pomerum, the cankerum, the locust, my great army, which I sent among you. And see, some of us are too limited in our thinking of what God can do. What we have to understand is, in, jo in, in Joel, when he said, I will rebuke the devourer that I sent among you. What he's saying is, I'm not just dealing with what you lost in your time. What he's saying is, I'm going to go back to your great, 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 great granddad where it first happened. I'm going to go back four generations of palmer worms, locusts, and canker worms. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick it all up. Come on, somebody. And I'm going to take four generations that messed up. And I'm going to give it to you. And what that simply means is, I'm going to bless your socks off to the point where it's going to sustain another four. How many people believe that God gonna cover four generations? You're not wasting your time. This ain't just about you. If the Lord delay his coming, tell somebody it ain't just about me. It ain't, this praise ain't just about me. When we come here and decree, it ain't just about me. Tell somebody, my timeline is in a circle. Your timeline ain't straight. You can't pinpoint the beginning or the end of a circle. Come on, somebody. We serve an ever-present God. The Bible says that heaven is set in a circuit. That means circle. That means that God is sitting in a circle. That's why Ecclesiastes said there's nothing new under the sun. It just keeps circling. It, it just keeps circling. And that's why he had the children of Israel along with Joshua to walk in a circle. Because when you turn in a circle, you aligning yourself with heaven. Glory to your name. When you turn in a circle, when you understand that your past may not be behind Behind you your past could be in front of you in the circle come on somebody your future could be behind you I, I know that's too much see I'm trying to help somebody today stop looking ahead and focus on the now what is God saying right now because what he's doing right now is affecting your past and your future. And so while you're so in a hurry to get to the future, you're trying to move forward, but your future behind you. Because God's timeline is in a circle. Come on, somebody. If we could just gain this one revelation. Now. Now, oh God, I feel that. Oh God, I feel that. Tell somebody now. What is God doing now? 
What's he saying right now? What's happening to me right now? That's what matters. Now faith. Now also means pay close attention. People of God, pay close attention to now. Don't think about what you're going to do when you leave here. That's how the enemy steal from you because you're thinking about what you're going to do after you leave here. If we would come in as a body and put our minds completely on That's why the scripture said, now is the acceptable time. What's the acceptable time right now? Praise. Right now, we praise. Right at this particular moment, we're blessing God with the fruit of our lips and with the clapping of our hands. Come on, somebody. That's where we are right now. Your now is affecting your past and your future. Oh, 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 God. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And when you get the revelation that your past and your future is in your present right now, look, watch this. I'm in the past. I'm in the future. I'm in the past. You can't take time back. It's ever present with you. Glory to your name. Most people are either stuck in the past on something that happened to them or they're trying to get to the future, and they're missing the... That's a word right there. I just preach, I could close the book and we could go home happy. Hello, I'm Benjamin Allen, pastor of Matthew 633 Church Ministries, and I want to welcome you to another broadcast, Let There Be Light. I pray something is said on this broadcast that will be a blessing to you. So now I want to go into uh, the topic for today. Y'all pretend that I dropped the butter in there. So I need a, what did it say? A half a cup. Look, I got a, look, I'm, I'm going to the word. The Bible says if you, if you, need, if you need men to give into your bosom, then you give. Give, and it shall be given. Press down, shaking together. See, so I had to, I had to measure. Okay, it's a half a cup. That's a cup. Okay, that's more. So see, I got to make sure I do what it say. Okay. So we have half a cup. Everybody see that? Pouring it in. So now I have combined all of the different ingredients. See, I've combined them but I still have to mix them. If I, if I combine, look, everything is combined, but until it start working, you have to realize that everything that happened in your life is working together. Everything, while you following God, and you're in the word with the, the manual, and you're following the directions, and not just being a hearer, but a doer. Come on. All right? That's it. Obedience. See, you have to know. You, you know in your heart if, you, if you're doing all that you know to do in the Word, yeah. that the Word tells you. Yeah. You see? And so when, when you're following the Word, all, oh, even the things before you start following the Word, that stuff starts working for your good. Once you yes, Lord. get in the instruction manual, okay? So all things work together for good. So we got to work it. Here's my tool. Don't, don't be afraid when God starts stirring up the gift, when things start getting stirred up. Okay, God, I have faith. I've been speaking. Now, not all of these different things, because I've been speaking the tribulation because of the word, I'm materializing. That is your ingredient. You, you, we're going to have to start looking at temptations differently. Wow, I know I'm following God. So this, all these things that's happening is my ingredient. And, and not only do I have to have the ingredient, but it's got to be joined together. 
and now it has to work together. So I'm working it. Oh my, look at that. It's not looking like flour anymore. It's starting to look like a substance. Now faith is, it's, y'all, it's starting to look like a substance. Oh my, look, God, look at, look at this. Look at this. It's looking substance. It don't look the same. So I'm working it, y'all. Y'all see me working it? I'm working it together. Why am I working it together? Because I'm going to get a good outcome. All things work together. If you don't mix it together, you're going to have a good cake. So that's why the verse said all things work together for good. Now look at this. Look at this. That looked like a substance, doesn't it? It started out looking like this. Look at that. Look, broken, broken shells, broken empty shells. Look at that. Look at that. And the elect lady said, we still ain't through. We, 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 we're still not through. That look, that look like a substance. Now faith is the substance, the substance for our TV audience. Look at that. That, that, that looks, that looks sub, that, that's a substance. Look how it's moving around. Everybody see that? Yes. Substance. Now faith is the substance. I was able to get the substance because I allowed all of what I was going through to work together. And so how do you incorporate that into your life? You have to know that it's all working together. Yes. When you have all these different diverse things going on around you, you have to say the word of God said it's working together. Not only is it working together, but for my good, go. for a desired result, yes. all right? And what we have to understand is God is the chef. Mm -hmm. And if he is the creator of everything, oh and he is the chef that's putting my ingredient together, oh my, oh, my God. He's about to make something real good. Who can make something better than God? Oh, Come on, somebody. So look, look, at, look at James again. It says, my brethren, count it all joy. That's why you can count it all joy when you get a paradigm and understand that it's working for your good. My brethren, count it all joy. Look at this. When you fall into divers, there's the different ingredient, divers temptations. temptations. Knowing this, that the trying. trying. Now, what's the point in me putting all this together if I don't try it? What you <laughs> that word try, trying means taste test. 
The scripture says, oh, taste and see. If the Lord is good, I think he know how to reproduce good. So if God is good, he know how to, repro he know, he know how to recreate good, right? He know how to duplicate good. Because everything that's good and perfect come from him. And so the chef, God, is bringing all of your temptations together, and he's going to try it. Let me, let me see how his attitude is. Oh, my God. Oh, okay, I, I'm going to have to do a little more adding. I'm going to have to take away. I'm going to have to add. I'm going to have to take. Let me, let me try elect ladies' faith. Let me see, let me see if she counted, counted it out. Elect lady, you ready? Y'all, this, this batter good, too. This, this faith good. This, this some good faith. This some good faith. All right? Okay. Finger looking good. Tell somebody, I want God to say, I'm finger licking good. All right. How's your attitude? Isn't that, isn't that awesome? That's great, isn't it? It tastes good. But guess what? It's got to go in the oven. Out of all you've been through. It's got to go in the oven. Next verse. First Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, think now it would be strange if you sit up here and did all this and then put it in the oven. Yes, it would. Now that's what would be. So why wouldn't God put you in the fire? That, that would be strange. Come on, now look. It said, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery, the fiery trial. trial, those heated trials, wow. which is to try. To try you. Huh. Now the heat got to try oh the God. substance uh -huh. and see if it's all right. Now I'm going to tell you what the heat does. when it Once you put the substance in the heat. Now remember, faith is a lot of different things. Faith is going out and getting the ingredients. Faith is mixing it, bringing it together and putting it in the same bowl. Faith is mixing it all together. Faith is tasting it and taking away or adding. And faith is also putting it in the oven. All right? So I did, a, I did the first trying. The first trying was to taste it and see if the consistency was good. Now, there's another phase of trying. It's got to be tried in the fire. Let me tell you what the fire does. There is a process that happens to the substance of cake batter when it is put in the oven. And again, this is baking911.com, baking911.com. I'm not going to go into all of it because of the ingredients, the toughness and the weakness, and it being balanced. When you put it in the heat, and this process happens more than one time, but when you put this cake in the heat, when the heat starts trying it and everything starts performing, see, in the fire is where you really start supposed to perform. Wow. We do the opposite. Wow. But God, God intends that when I put you in the fire, that's when you're supposed to be at your best. Wow. Everybody see that? And so what happens is, look, when you put this batter in the heat and the heat starts trying it, guess what happens? A decrease and then an, in, then a, a, a increase. Okay. And that, that's scripture. This is what really happens in a cake. This is the mind of God. Yeah. When you put this substance in the oven, the heat tries the substance and it causes a decrease before an increase. Wow. John chapter 3, verse 30, next verse. Can I show you a scripture? He must, talking about Jesus, increase, but I must decrease. When God puts you in the fire, it's so you can decrease and so he can increase. That's why he said, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Everybody see that? Temperature and time affects the final baking good. You see that? Temp and time. Temperature and time determine your outcome. That's why you can't get out the oven too early. People jumping out the fire. You, you got to start all over again. You every, all that you work for because you didn't have the patience to wait on God. 
Did y'all know that, uh, that cake has a framework, just like your body has a skeleton? Yeah. Cake has a skeleton, it's called air bubbles. That's why when you open the oven, if a, if a draft comes in and those air, those air bubbles pop, the cake falls, you destroyed the framework. That's why the scripture says, let patience and James have her perfect word. So you won't be a half-finished cake, a half-baked cake. Because a half-baked cake is not good. If you wouldn't need a half-baked cake, I'm, I'm sure God wouldn't either. God doesn't want us to be half-baked. Everybody see that? First Peter chapter 1, verse 7, look at this. That the trial, can I confirm everything I told you? Look at First Peter that the trial of your faith. faith, look at that people of God, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, look at this, though it be tried in what? With fire. With fire. That it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearance of Jesus Christ. If you will go ahead and let God put you in the fire you, and you stay in the fire, what would be the praise and honor and the glory? At his appearance. The appearance of the cake. The appearance of what you were hoping for the whole time is what you get after the fire. So tell somebody, after you go through the fire, after you suffer a while. Come on, somebody. Let me get this cake open. Loose here. And so you're going to have opposition. The devil, Matt, look, loose here now. Take your hands off. Look at that. Wow. There's my hope. Now, I'm going to close it out with this because you may be wondering. And, and, the, and, the, and the hope make him not ashamed. TV viewers may be wondering. Those that are listening right now. It says in Hebrew, now faith. And I believe it's the next slide. Now faith is the substance. We found out how to get the substance, right? Of things hopeful. We found out where hope come from, right? For the evidence of things not seen. How is faith the evidence of things not seen? You want me to show you? This is the thing hoped for that has manifested. When we first started, could you see this? No. Right? Nope. Now that you can see this, what do we call this? Hope. Evidence. 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 This is the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. Right? right? This is the evidence, the final product, the finished product, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the evidence of things not seen. How can you have evidence of something not seen? Right. And see, that's how people get confused. It's either evidence or it's not seen. Which one is it? This is the evidence of things not seen. What? The eggs, the water. In order for me to have, I can prove that I had eggs, flour, and cake. Why? Because I got a cake. I can prove that I had an ingredient. Why? Because I have a cake. I can prove that God is real. Why? Because he changed my life. Jesus is evident in me. Jesus is alive in me. Jesus is real in me. There are some people right now, you've gone through some things and you came out and it's evident that God brought you out. Yeah. You are the evidence of things not seen. We may not be able to see God with our eyes, but I can see him when I look at Minister Stansberry. I can see him when I look at Sister Carter and what she's been through and what she's come. I can see him when I look at Sister Banks. I can see him when I see what he did for Brother Alex Phillips. I can see him through what he's doing in here. But everybody see this. Look at, look, all you've been through is worth it. Because now you can get your fork, wow. your plate, Ooh, and you can tell that devil, oh. hey, out of all I've been through, I got my cake. Yeah. I got my cake. I got my evidence. You no longer see all of your, see, that's why I try to tell people, if you're going to go through, you'll no longer see all of those troubles. Yeah. You don't see the trouble no more. All you do is taste. Yeah. You taste of the goodness. Yeah. If you're going to go through, you're not going to even remember. Yeah. 
how the eggs had to be broken up. You not going to remember what you've been through. All you're going to you know at that present moment is, man, this cake is good. And that's what God is doing in your life. God is looking, it's good. It's good. My son, my daughter, it's good. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. Well, people of God, once again, I am out of time for this broadcast. Once again, I pray that something said was a blessing to you. I pray that something ignited a fire in you. And if you're already on fire, I pray that it encourages you to keep moving a step further in the Lord. Listen, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I invite you to accept him. He wants a love relationship with you. All you have to do is talk to him. Prayer simply means to state a request. Talk to him. Talk to him. And and what I want to do right now is just lead you in a simple prayer that you can pray. I want you to say, Heavenly Father, first of all, I enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your course of praise. That simply means I'm coming to you, thanking you first and praising you for what you've already done, even for allowing me this opportunity to come to you. Now, I repent, so I repent for all of my sins, knowing and unknowingly. And I thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross that I can come boldly to you to ask for forgiveness. And now I present my body, I present my body, a living sacrifice, holy unto you. That means I'm going to live holy. I repent. I'm turning from my ways, my sinful ways, and I'm turning to you. I'm getting a new circle a new circle of influence, a new circle of friends, people that are calling on the name of Jesus. Listen, if you repeated this with me and listened to the words that I said following what I asked you to repeat with me, you are saved. Now you need to get in the Bible, teaching, church, right at dividing the word of truth. And you also need to seek for the Holy Ghost. That's your teacher and will bring all things back to your remembers whatever I have said unto you in the word of God. So listen, people of God, be encouraged. Know that God loves you. God is with you. I'm Pastor Benjamin Allen of Matthew 633, Church Ministries. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. And he saw that it was good. Until next time, God bless you.